everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today we are talking about Bowser's Fury. This is a little add-on package game that they attached to Super Mario 3D World, the, the port for the Nintendo Switch. And normally I don't uh, have the opportunity to play brand new games such as this, but for Valentine's Day I was actually given this along with the Cat Mario Amiibo from Autumn. So I'm very grateful for her and I'm very excited to be able to play this brand new game alongside with everybody else so I can actually be a part of the conversation. Since this is a brand new game, I just want to preface this by giving a quick little spoiler warning. Um, I will just be talking about like the game mechanics and then the premise of the plot, not that there is much, but um, just giving you a little heads up, there will be some footage of the actual game um, on the screen too, so if you are pretty sensitive to this spoiler stuff, especially for a brand new game such as this, uh, please uh, go check out my other videos, they are a lot older than this one. Hey guys, me in the editing room. Just wanted to let you guys know, I do know that the collectibles in this game are called Cat Shines, not Cat Shrines. I don't know why I kept calling them Cat Shrines during this recording. I knew they were Cat Shines because of like, you know, Super Mario Sunshine, but uh, for some reason I just kept calling them Cat Shrines in this one, so please forgive me. So I actually went straight into this mode. I still haven't played the Super Mario 3D World yet. I never played it on the Wii U, and I was just so excited to play Bowser's Fury because it was uh, it's like a brand new mode. We don't know anything about it. So I went straight to this mode. I will get to 3D World after this one. It's really not that long of a game to beat through. It's kind of more of a side game, not like a full thing. It took maybe three and a half hours to roll the credits, and I would say I was about halfway done collecting all the cat shrines. Cat shrines in this game kind of act like power Power moons in Super Mario Odyssey where they're not quite that hard to get like a power star in Super Mario 64 for example um, you do you still have to do challenges to acquire them but they they come they come by you a lot easier um, than the stars do so to roll the credits to you uh, end up fighting Fury Bowser and Fury Bowser is kind of like this inky black giant kaiju looking Bowser the plot of the game is basically uh, he is corrupted by this stuff and uh, Bowser Jr. enlists Mario's help to defeat him. And so what you are collecting these cat shrines because that allows Mario to turn into this huge giant super saiyan cat Mario thing to fight off Bowser. And um, he is like, he reoccurs as you play through the game. Um, it's kind of like, it's random. I'm not sure if there was a specific moment that makes him appear, but as you play through the game, he will reoccur over and over again. And it does kind of get annoying after a while because like you'll be doing this uh, difficult platforming challenge and he'll just randomly spawn and mess you up. He'll start shooting like fireballs from above you and, and shooting these giant uh, fire lasers at you. So he, he does kind of mess you up. You almost have to drop everything you are doing to fight him off. Off, and then he does wander off eventually but he'll just uh, uh, keep on coming up over and over again and then when you reach 50 cat shrines um, you do do like this ultimate showdown with him um, I won't go any further into detail about that so after you roll the credits uh, you you do go back into the overworld map and uh, now it gives you the locations of the rest of the cat shrines and it allows you to fast travel and uh, there are 50 more cat shrines that you can find throughout the game so there's a hundred cat shrines about three and a half hours to roll the credits and I would say maybe about seven or eight hours to 100% complete this game which I did do um, is it worth it to 100% complete this game? I I would say probably not if you're not having a good time. Although I was just having a blast playing this game, so I've, I, I did end up 100% completing it. It's, it's a short enough game that it's not a big deal. It is just so much fun to play through this game. You are accompanied by Bowser Jr., like I mentioned earlier, and you can choose how much he helps you. This is kind of acting like a second player mode as well. I did not have the opportunity to play with two people, but I guess the second player controls Bowser Jr., which I can imagine would be really, really fun. Um, at the beginning of the game, it, it asks you how much do you want Bowser Jr. to help you and I just wanted to play all on my own so I said not at all so he doesn't assist you in fighting at all when you turn it to this setting but you can also turn it to hey fight a little bit or fight a lot and I can't attest to how much exactly he does help out in those settings 
I really like what they're doing with Bowser Jr. lately. Um, in the newest Paper Mario Origami King game, he, he does play actually like as a companion along with Kamek. No appearance of Kamek in this mode. It doesn't explain where Kamek is, but it's just Bowser Jr. And I really like that they are kind of making him his own character with his floating car and his like magical paintbrush. I like that that is a reoccurring item for him ever since Super Mario Sunshine. But I feel like in Super Mario Sunshine after that, they didn't do a whole lot with him. He was kind of more of a side character lately for the games like for the nintendo switch modern nintendo games they really are making him into his own kind of thing you uh as you play through this level it's like this big old open world thing um it's it's kind of like an experiment to see what an actual open world mario game would be like and so you're you're traversing through these islands the the whole setting is like this watery uh island i feel like the water is just kind of to fill up the open spaces of the open world. I feel like if they just did grass, it might be a little bit boring. Um, you'll you'll go across the, these worlds and you find these like uh, uh, question marks painted onto the sides of the walls and you can tap on them using the uh, touch screen and Bowser Jr. will just kind of paint it and this can reveal like power-ups most of the time for you. So that's, uh, that's how he helps you out. Otherwise, he just kind of follows you around. He'll kind of laugh at you if you get damaged by an enemy, but he will be concerned if you do die. <laughs> Mario controls awesome. Uh, the way that he moves reminds me a lot of Super Mario Sunshine, where that it's just so quick and snappy. He can change directions on the fly. Unfortunately, no triple jump, which, like, what the heck? Triple jump is, like, a Mario staple. But he does have his slide jump where you crouch, and then uh, uh, while you're moving, you, you glide across the area. He has his aerial. He actually has the uh, uh, ground pound jump. A lot of movement like that. Although I feel like his jumps don't go as far as they used to in previous Mario. Mario games. It seems like the main mode of traversing across this world is all the power-ups. There's like five different power-ups that you can get. The, the Tanuki suit, the Cat Mario, Fire Flower, Boomerang, that kind of stuff. And then you can also interact with a lot of in-game objects. Like if you pick up a Koopa shell, you can just hide in the Koopa shell and spin around across the open water. Um, there's the this like Loch Ness monster looking creature. I believe he's from 3D Mario World, but like I said, I haven't played that yet. His name's Plessy, I think, and that he kind of traverses across the water really fast. That's kind of how you do these fast travel things. Before you roll the credits initially, you can't fast travel. So you ride Plessy, and he moves fast enough. You can actually get a lot of these cat shrines riding him, doing these like obstacle courses, chasing down the uh, bunnies. Um, there's, there's ones where it's like uh, you have to go through certain locations within like 20 seconds and you have to reach the cat shrine before it disappears that kind of stuff i, I want to say a good fourth of the game is riding around plessy which is actually really really fun i really like riding him he has this cool little boost where he dives into the water and then if you jump right at the time where he breaches the surface again you'll get this cool little boost it's, it's just fun riding him around one of my favorite power-ups though has to be cat mario so like i said had him play 3d mario world and uh, initially when I heard about the Cat Mario stuff, I'd see the commercials for 3D Mario World during the Wii U era. And I'm just like, that is a whole cat theme, a whole game based around cats. That is so dumb. And then in Mario Maker 2, they add this whole mode with the 3D Mario World mode. And it's all like, you get the cat suit and there's the cat bells. Isn't that so cool? And I just thought that was so dumb. But now that I have played through Bowser's Fury, I am all aboard the cat train. I love Cat Mario. He can climb up the walls. He can do this cool little dive. He's got this swipe pounce thing. He moves super fast. I like how all the enemies look now with the cat ears. I am I am all aboard, which uh, playing through this just makes me so excited to play through 3D Mario World with the whole cat theme. Bring it on. Like I, I have completely done a 180 on this whole cat theme idea. They actually make coins uh, have a use in this one. So in the original, you know, in the original Mario games, I've always complained about this, where if you get 100 coins, you get a life. Well, this game doesn't have lives. Instead, I think they took a lot of inspiration from Super Mario Odyssey, where um, coins now, if you get 100 coins, you get a random power-up. And Bowser Jr. will actually store up to five of each power-ups for you, and you can just access these power-ups anytime. So it seems like most of the time you are not without power-ups. They just keep throwing them at you, which is actually pretty nice. It does make things a little easier, but um, it actually makes coins useful because uh, you get 100, you get a power-up, and then if you do you end up dying it just takes away some of your lives or some of your coins it's really not that big of a deal i just feel like it's a lot better way of approaching the whole mario coin mechanic i just 
I, I much prefer it this way. From now on, for all Mario games, get 100 coins, you get a power-up. Just do away with the whole one-up system. You know, Bowser, he, he is annoying. Um, probably my one gripe about this game would be Fury Bowser, just because he appears so randomly. And you do actually need him to open, to break apart certain blocks. Like, only his fire blast can break them. So you, you kind of trick him into blowing up these blocks for you. So to get certain cat shrines, you're kind of just sitting around waiting for Fury Bowser to appear. Now granted, you can use the Bowser amiibo to make him appear, but when I'm playing on the go, I'm not taking around my Bowser amiibo. Also, how many people really do collect amiibo and have Bowser amiibos on hand? So there's not really any way to control when he appears. Um, I really wish that after you rolled the credits initially, there was just a setting like make Bowser appear, make him go away, rather than this whole random system. It just can be uh, so disruptive of what you're currently doing. And the only real, like there's only a couple ways to make him go away. One is to acquire a cat shrine, and then the light will make him just wander off, or you turn into the big old giant Super Saiyan cat Mario, um, and then you have to actually fight him to make him go away. Uh, or um, near the end of the game when I was just collecting the last couple cat shrines that I needed to get I found out that if you just die then he leaves he laughs at you and then he leaves so I actually found that was a lot faster to do when I was just trying to get these last 10 cat shrines like go away Bowser I already used you to get all the the blocks that I needed destroyed really love the music in this game um, there's there's a couple of pretty good tracks like one with these whistles that I really enjoy or this uh, this uh, violin fiddle thing going on really upbeat really fun and then of course whenever Bowser appears it's like this hardcore electric guitar music it's it's such a good soundtrack and I actually did listen to this one a couple times the world itself just so fun uh, colorful like I said I love the cat aesthetic it's it's set on the beach but there's a lot of actually different biomes it's not just the the sunshine kind of aesthetic there's like a, a snow island there's a lava island just so fun and colorful just a, a nice world to be in and it really makes you excited for what a truly open world Mario game could be this isn't I don't know once once you kind of go to each island they're kind of separated they like each island has its five cat shrines once you really start to pick apart what this game is after you roll the credits you really see that each island is you know really kind of its own separate level anyway you can just traverse each one across the water and when you're first playing this game it really feels all interconnected and magical you keep getting sidetracked by all these cat shrines everywhere i mean it really just feels like one cohesive world but uh, each island really is its own separate land when you think about it it's just so easy to get sucked into it though i could really see why people are saying that they beat this game in one sitting i think you know, it, it wouldn't be that hard to roll the credits first in in one sitting, but uh, to complete the game, I think will take maybe two or three set sittings, unless you just really hunker down and you're like, hey, I'm going to play this for eight hours. It, it is actually a lot longer than I thought it would be. I thought this was going to be a quick little uh, one, two hour experience, but it's actually pretty uh, beefy, like some, some decent amount of content here. I wish there was a way to pin certain locations on the minimap, like similar to to Breath of the Wild, you know, you can make little custom waypoints. It would have been a lot easier um, before you get all the cat shrine locations uh, located for you. I wish there was just some way to pin, like, okay, I see something here. It's uh, Bowser blocks, and I can't destroy them yet until Fury Bowser shows up. So I'm going to put a pin in it until he shows up again. Otherwise, like sometimes he'd show up, and I couldn't remember where the blocks I needed to him to destroy were. So I would just wander around. I feel like that would be a pretty good quality of life thing to implement. You know, even just through a patch or something. Overall, I'm I'm really excited about this game. I had a great time playing it, and. Uh, I do like that it's not its own full length game. I feel like the whole Fury Bowser reappearing thing would get pretty annoying after a while, but for a shorter experience like this, really had a great time with it and it just really makes you excited for what Mario has um, potential for in the future. I think I will give this a five out of five. Um, is it necessarily worth the price of admission alone if you're not interested in 3D Mario World? I I don't know if I would pay $60 just for Bowser's Fury, but if you're inter if you're like slightly inter interested in 3D Mario World, 
Um, this is just a, a fun little neat pack-in game, and I, I heartily recommend it if you like 3D Mario. Well, guys, that should be it for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Bowser's Fury. I'm excited to actually be a part of the conversation, and I get to play the game alongside with everybody else rather than waiting a year or two later before I can finally get my hands on it. That should be it for me, though. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!